Hello boys and girls. This is Sister Bedford and I'm teaching lesson nine for K through third grade. The name of the lesson is Naaman Learns to Obey God. And our focus is on obeying, obeying the one true God. The scripture is found in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter five, verses one through 15. Let's start with a prayer. Dear God, help us to learn how to trust and obey you because you are the one true God. You love us, you take care of us, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we're going to talk in the lesson today about following instructions. Instructions are directions or explanation of how something is done. They can be written or they can be spoken. For example, when you get a toy for your birthday, there's a paper inside of it that tells your parents how to put the toy together or to tell you how to play it. And those are called written instructions. Now, when your parents tell you something to do at home, like to clean up your room, do your homework, those are spoken instructions. What happens when you follow instructions? Let's look at a couple of examples. For instance, instruction number one could be listen to the teacher and take notes. And this would be so you could make a good grade on your test. So is this girl listening? Yes, she's following instructions. She's listening and taking notes. So what happened when she obeyed and followed the instructions? She made a good grade on the test the teacher gave on Friday. What happens when you don't follow instruction? Here's another example, listen and obey parents. These boys were given song books and told to sing and worship. Are they following instructions? No, they're playing with each other. One has a frog in his lap that he was told to leave home. No one is singing. Now they won't be able to go to the movies together after church. Think about a time when you were given an instruction and it didn't make sense to you. Maybe some of the teacher's virtual classroom rules. You might think it doesn't make sense to you to act like you're at school, to sit in one spot during class, or to not, to be, or not be able to eat during class. You may feel you don't have to follow those rules because you're really not at school, you're at home, but you must follow the instructions. Let's explore God's word. We're going to learn in our Bible story that we should obey and follow God's instructions even if they don't make sense to us. Naaman, that's the person we're talking about in this lesson. He was captain of the Syrian army. He was a mighty and brave man, but he had leprosy. This was a skin disease for which there was no cure. Leprosy caused you to have spots, sores, and discoloration on your skin. This could really cover your whole body. If you take a look at Naaman, you see the sores and the spots on his arms and his face. One day, the slave girl from Israel that served Naaman's wife got up enough courage to say to her mistress, I wish that my master would meet the prophet who lives in Samaria. He would heal Naaman of his disease. Naaman's wife rushed to tell her husband the good news. Naaman listened and agreed with his wife that he should go and find this prophet. Naaman went to his king. He told him what the girl from Israel had said. And the king of Samaria said, go, and I will send a letter of introduction for you to give to the king of Israel. So Naaman loaded up lots of silver and lots of gold and 10 changes of clothes. Can you imagine taking 10 changes of clothes? But he was going on a long journey and he wanted to make sure he had enough. 
the king waved and sent Naaman off on his journey to Israel, hoping that he would, turn, would return healed. When Naaman came to the king of Israel, Naaman's servant handed him the letter of introduction from the king of Syria. The letter from the king of, to the king of Israel read, I am sending my servant Naaman to you. I'm sending him so you can heal him of his skin disease. The king thought, what? Then he tore his clothes to show how upset he was. I'm not God. Why does this man send someone to me for me to heal of a skin disease? He is just trying to start trouble with me. Meanwhile, the prophet of God, Elijah, heard that the king of Israel had gotten so upset he tore his clothes. So he sent a message to the king of Israel. Why have you become so upset that you tore your clothes? Let Naaman come to me. Then he will know there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots to Elijah's house. It was a simple and poor house. This bothered Naaman. He also was bothered that no one came outside to meet him. After all, he was captain of the Syrian army. Elijah did not even come out of his house, but sent his servant out to meet him with a message. Go and wash in the Jordan River seven times. Then your skin will be healed and you will be clean. I don't think Naaman thought those uh, instructions made sense. Naaman became angry. He said, I thought Elijah would surely come out and stand before me, that he would call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the place and heal this disease. Why can't I wash in the beautiful rivers in Damascus and become clean instead of this dirty, muddy Jordan River? He was so angry, he ordered his men to leave at once. But Naaman's servants came near and talked to him. They said, my father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, wouldn't you have done it? Doesn't it make more sense just to do it? After all, he only told you, wash and you will be clean. So Naaman did as Elijah had said. He went down and dipped in the Jordan six times, and then on the seventh time, Naaman was clean and healed. He was so overcome with joy. He now knew that he was healed when no one else was able to heal him. Naaman had learned to obey the one true God. Naaman now knew that there was no God in all the earth except in Israel. He and his servants went back to Elijah's house and kneeled in front of him with gifts of gold and silver. Elijah came outside his house this time and he told Naaman, I don't need your gifts of gold and silver. I want God to have all the glory for this miracle. So this is the end of our story. What did you learn about obedience? Do what God asks you to do the first time completely, joyfully, and without complaining. At first, Naaman hesitated to obey God. He didn't like what Naaman, uh, Elijah had told him to do. He didn't want to dip in the Jordan. He wanted to dip in the beautiful rivers at, in Damascus. But eventually he obeyed God and stopped complaining and was healed. So remember that obedience is being respectful to your parents and God's instructions and doing what they tell you to do. This brings us to the end of our lesson. Let's end with prayer. Lord, help me to obey you with a good attitude right away, all the way, every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.